Finger waving is the art of shaping and directing the hair into alternate wave patterns. In each wave pattern, there's a trough, which is the smooth section and indented, and a ridge, which is raised slightly. Finger waving was popular in the 20s and 30s and has made a comeback many times in the hairstyling industry. With styles on the red carpet in the 90s, finger wave made its way back into our salons. It's an important part of hairstyling because of everything that it teaches us. Finger wave teaches us how to move and direct the hair. It builds dexterity, coordination, finger strength. It allows us the ability to shape and mold hair with just a comb and fingers. And that's something that's really going to show in all our blow dry styles. It's going to be helpful in updo styles and roller set comb outs. So a lot of times when you see your finger wave come to life, you will see all your other skills start to improve and all the other services you offer clients just step up a little notch. We follow the shape of the head when we finger wave and that's so important in hair cutting, in roller placement, in foil placement, for coloring. Um, so it teaches us a lot of things that can be applied to other aspects of the hairstyling industry and other services that we offer. The waving motion that you use should be pliable but strong. I like to start off with fix gel. If hair is very coarse, I will use fix gel and maybe add a little shine serum to that fix gel or maybe just a drop of a very liquid pliable gel. So this is a very good gel to start to use as your base. If the hair is medium, I might mix half fix gel with half of a more pliable waving lotion. If the hair is fine, I would maybe, instead of fix gel, go to a styling gel such as, such as Joico's firm gel, because it's still a firm gel, and maybe add a little bit of waving lotion to that as well. The Shine Serum, I like to add sometimes, it just gives the style a little extra glistening, a little extra shine, and it does make the gel a little more workable. When you start your finger wave, you're always going to look for the whirl in the top, and that whirl is in the crown, and it's going to tell you where you're starting. And then you're going to want to make your part from the whirl to the high side of the receding area. So once you've got your part, find the whirl, find the high side of the receding area, then you're ready to begin. We always shape from the closed end to the open end. You're always going to use an all-purpose comb. And to hold your comb, you're going to want to place three fingers on top. In the middle is your middle finger, two fingers beside it, and your thumb and index finger go on either side. This gives you good control and good balance and for your comb in your hand. We're going to use the wide teeth to put our shaping in and the fine teeth to finish the shaping and we're going to use the wide teeth to ridge the shaping. So to start with, with the wide teeth, we're just going to put our shaping in, starting at the closed end, which we're going to put at the face. And the reason we usually practice with the closed end at the face is 90% of the population, their hair grows forward. So when you have a live model, it's a good thing that you can practice on mannequins with the forward movement. Then when you have a live model, chances are that you'll be used to that. And when, it, when you do have a client that it's the reverse, you'll easily be able to transfer that skill of shaping the opposite way. Then we're going to follow through with the fine teeth. And once we follow through with the fine teeth, we are ready to ridge. 
When you use your gel, don't use an excess amount of gel. You don't want to use too much gel. You just want enough and remember it's at the root area. So now we're ready to start our first ridge. We start in the crown. Picture a small clock here. This being 12 o'clock, this being 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock. And we're going to start our finger at the 2 o'clock position. Our wide teeth right against our finger. And we're going to slide and lay that comb down. Hang on to the ridge we've made and sweep the opposite way of what we slid the comb. So if we slid this way, we're going to sweep this way. So I'm going to slide and I'm starting at the 2 o'clock position. When I slide, I'm going to get to the 3 o'clock position, which makes my comb horizontal. I'm going to lay that down flat and sweep the opposite way. And there we have our first ridge. This first ridge is very, very important. It, you should see a small S shaping when you look at this ridge. An S shaping here. This part of the S, the bottom part that comes out, should be past your party. So everyone hopefully can see that S shape and we see that the bottom part that comes out is a little bit past our party. Not too far past because then it would be over directed and we don't want to over direct. So now when you go to your, do your next one, you'll see we do have a little bit of a split here, right here. So we want to try and bring this hair in and close that split off before we start our next ridge. So we bring that hair in, make it match up, and now we're ready to ridge again. So remember, finger right in line with the ridge you made previously. Slide, lay it flat, and sweep in the opposite direction. Don't try and slide and lay down at the same time. It just doesn't work as well. Connect everything again. Slide, lay down, sweep the opposite way. Connect. Slide, lay down, sweep the opposite way. Connect it all again. Slide. Just trying to get some of that hair in the right spot. Lay down, sweep the opposite way. Okay, so once you're done that, you can see that you have an open end here now. And we could just start and keep going. But before we do that, we have to shape our closed end on this side and match it up to this closed end. So it's open to close only up to here. So now we have to go to the closed side because remember we always shape from closed to open. So we're going to put our shaping in. We can go first with the wide teeth just to put a rough shaping in and then with the fine teeth to put our actual shaping in. And just follow along until you get to approximately this point. When you get to here, now we have to match this shaping with this shaping here. We can see the straight hair in the middle. So to match these two, you're going to have to hang on to the ridge that you've previously made. So I'm just going to shape this hair here a little bit, hang on to the ridge as I bring those two shapings together. And now we can see it's a continual flow and those shapings are brought together. But do remember to hang on to this ridge. You have to hang on to that ridge. If you don't hang on to the ridge, it will get all pulled out. Okay, so once we've done that, then we're ready to go back to our open end, because remember we always ridge 
from the open end and just as so that your ridges stay uniform always place make it two finger widths make it the width of your comb but have some type of guide for yourself so that you always have the same uniform trough all the way around the hair so now you can see that split bring that together and then continue to ridge and now we just go all the way around to the other side just following the shape of the head remember to always smooth your final C shaping with your fine teeth so we're going to bring that together going to ridge and then smooth with our fine teeth and roll your fingers off just so that you don't pull the hair up and you're always moving your comb probably about half an inch and so far we've been going pretty horizontal here just keeping the comb horizontal but as you get past the part this is going to be our last one that's horizontal because after here now we have to angle this comb up because if we just kept going straight this would be a very large trough so we need to go and angle our comb up to make this trough smaller and sometimes you need just a little bit more movement right in that area as you're angling up see your split bring that in before you ridge roll your fingers off and we just keep going and remember don't pinch your ridge it's okay if it's more of a molding it's better than pinching your ridge use your wide teeth slide lay it down my fingers aren't even together they're just holding that ridge in place and our last well maybe we'll have one more and then smooth with your fine teeth okay so if you are practicing finger wave and it is a good skill to have whether it's on your final exam or not it is a great skill to have and you'll see all your service your other services that you offer clients improve so if you're going to practice I would suggest practicing this over and over and over again first practice developing this S in the crown area then the first ridge so it's sort of like a funnel here narrow to wide practice that and then get around and remember when you pass your part you have to angle your comb up and if you practice that over and over and over you're going to find that your finger wave is really easy i'm going to finish this finger wave off and we'll see the end result and when we get to the ends we just put some pin curls in there so good luck keep practicing